Hi, I'm Michael. Welcome to Tamil Rui Studio. Today I will show you how to take care of hake. Uh, hake is a Japanese brush made of human hair uh, in a flat form, uh, wooden in most cases, I have never seen different, uh, of different width and uh, it is very high quality, most of them, and it is used for urushi. Uh, it takes quite a lot of time to learn how to use hake and even more time to learn how to take care of it. I will show you today how to clean the hake before the session and how to take care of it and clean it and store it after the session. On the screen you can see me mixing and filtering pigments but uh, there is a plastic box on the bottom of the screen and the three hackers inside. Uh, the brushes, the bristles of the brushes are uh, infused with oil, uh, not to let any residue of any crests of uh, urushi to solidify and stiffen them. In a moment, I speeded up this part, but in a moment I will show you how to uh, clean the hake before using it, because the oil on the bristles would contaminate the, uh, our urushi uh, and it will be in a normal speed. Those three hakas here are uh, kiradashi hakas, so or just basic hakas. Uh, they are not full width, full length, sorry. Uh, they are not full length, so in the highest quality, and the best and the most expensive hakas, the hair are uh, very long, up to 24 centimeters long, and they are embedded in wood. And the whole length of the wooden handle is filled with hair inside. Uh, it's made this way to uh, make haka last much longer. Uh, it's very expensive, so using it and once it's the bristles are uh, not usable anymore, throwing it away would be a huge waste. So the hake can be mm, uh, sharpened like a pencil, so cut back. What I did a second before was cleaning the hake from uh, oil and I washed it with turpentine. Uh, I washed it, I worked it uh, on, this wooden, on this glass plate and now once I clean it, I will move to the next step of cleaning Hakka before the session, so before painting, and it will be cleaning it with Urushi. I will be cleaning it with Urushi I'm going to use in this session. So first I'm using a little bit of Urushi from the paper I used to filter it, and I take it on the bristles and I work it on the working surface. Uh, you have to mm, infuse hair of the hake with uh, urushi, work it this way. I show it uh, uh, on the on the video, and then push the rest of urushi from the bristles with the wooden spatula or plastic spatula, uh, like scrape it and and push it out. You have to repeat this process uh, several times. I usually do this three times uh, with a hake which was stored in oil. Uh, sometimes after mm, sharpening the hake, I wash it and I use shampoo for this and then dry the hake and uh, after uh, such procedure it's uh, does not require so thorough cleaning. This cleaning is has several different um, objectives. So first is to clean it off from the uh, turpentine, from the rests of oil, and from the uh, clean from the urushi used in the previous session. Second one is to get rid of dust, and uh, even in a cleanest environment, it catches dust, and this dust will destroy the surface of the pen or any other object you are lacquering. 
and the third objective is to get rid of any loose bristles it's very high quality bristles but still they can break or or uh, split or something like that so working it on a on a surface and scraping it spra scraping it with the spatula cleans uh, gets rid of any broken pieces of uh, bristle from the brush uh, now Haka is ready for uh, for painting and this part I will speed up either pen I'm working on in this video uh, is Edge uh, from Wet and Twice and it's gonna be very interesting because it has one flat surface so it's a round pen but with a flat surface and it's gonna be Akata Minuri or Kurota Minuri I haven't decided yet and uh, it will be very nicely visible because all Tamenuri uh, lacquering Tamenuri technique shows uh, the most on the edges or any uh, any sharp uh, bends of the object it's lacquered so where the Tamenuri layer so the overcoat layer which is uh, slightly transparent shows through the base layer which is in this case red so Akata Menuri if I decide to go with transparent lacquer or Kurota Menuri if I decide to go with the translucent black lacquer uh, I've just lacquered uh, the body and the cup now the section and one more part I decided to make with in this set is a small uh, pen holder or pen pillow made of ebonite and it will match this pen exactly it will be it's done parallelly to this pen so it will be exactly the same there is one more thing about cleaning the hacker before the session it also infuses the bristles with uh, urushi and uh, hake stores some urushi in the bristles so once you are lacquering it uh, acts like a, some kind of a container of urushi but at the same time the hair in this hake are so dense so densely packed and and compressed that uh, uh, you can easily achieve a very uh, smooth surface now we are after the session usually I lacquer much more but I wanted to show you how to do this you have to clean the, pen, the brush again uh, you clean the brush with oil uh, in this case it's, it's rapeseed oil and I dip the brush uh, the hake in oil work it on the surface for several seconds uh, then push oil with urushi out of the hair uh, with spatula and repeat and you have to repeat this process up to five times sometimes more it depends on the type of lacquer usually heavily pigmented lacquers take much more work and pure like kijiro or pure nakanuri uh, are much easier to clean uh, This process is, uh, you have to use quite some force. You have to uh, like pump the urushi from between the bristles and uh, not just swing it around, but also like push it slightly harder to, uh, to pump it out, to, to force it out. As you can see, uh, each repetition gives slightly different color and because uh, it's getting diluted so this is the third one and uh, one more time you push the urushi out oil actually oil with traces of urushi out of the bristles and repeat
Yeah, if you saw any Japanese artists working uh, on Hakka and Wifurushi, they can you can see that their mm, skills with wooden spatula are incredible. Uh, they can use just one simple wooden spatula to clean the surface, clean the pan, uh, transfer the urushi, and they do this with uh, incredible skills and grace at the same time. I'm cli quite clumsy uh, still with this, and as you can see, it's quite messy. Uh, okay, now what I do, I uh, wash the wooden part of the pan and also the bristles with turpentine, and it's not necessary part i just wanted to speed up the process uh, you could do this with oil uh, rapeseed oil alone uh, but you can also use turpentine as you can see i don't use gloves and i'm not allergic to rushi but like 90 percent probability is that you are allergic so never do this as i did it before once again oil to infuse the bristles and to make sure that it's clean as you can see it's almost there it's only just a hint of red in oil uh, pushed out of the bristles so it will be last or one but last uh, repetition of cleaning with oil and then I will just infuse the hair with oil and store it. Uh, I will put it in the oil container with those crocodile holders and to keep the bristles, the hair in oil but not touching the bottom because all the dirt uh, falls to the bottom of this uh, of this jar and I'm trying to show it but it's not easy uh, and uh, the bristles are still infused with oil it will stay like this for an hour or two or something like that and then I will transfer it to this box uh, it's closed so it's safe from any dirt or, or, or dust 